Today we're talking about some more Season 5 changes. These have been announced today, once again by Hyrule Stealth, and this time it's about the new art style of the Conquest map and changes to gameplay clarity. First we will go through the article itself and make some comments on certain things that I think are good or are bad, and then make some further statements after that. Also some other things that I want to mention, I'll do that at the end of the video, so we'll do that later. Now for the article. Hey friends, MLC Stealth here with another update. Today I'll be grabbing two of our art leads and letting you take a closer look into the Season 5 Conquest map art direction. Everyone has different toasters. Some might have little dials that toast your bread longer. Others might have colorful lights that shine for all to see. No matter what toaster, we want it to be able to run Smite. Whenever we improve the art in any of our games, performance is always at the forefront of our minds. We want to make sure that everyone who is currently able to play Smite will continue to be able to after the update. The team is focused on making sure the update will run as close to, if not smoother than, current Smite on lower end machines while still looking awesome. This first paragraph I believe is a good approach overall. I do think it's good for the game if no one is isolated out and we see in other big games that they are usually not that demanding when it comes to graphics but rather be successful through reaching as much of an audience as possible, say for example League of Legends or Dota. There are obviously outliers here even in the multiplayer department, think for example of a PUBG, but generally speaking the optimization in multiplayer is more towards breaching as many players as possible. What's a bit unfortunate here is that there is no mention of higher end machines. Sure, it's great that lower end machines will be able to play the game, but it would also be nice to have a good performance on a good machine. And we've had issues with that in the past, where even the highest, beefiest PCs basically weren't able to run Smite as smoothly as one would expect, especially in comparison to other games. The article continues with statements from the art director Chuck and environmental lead Christian. With Smite, we are always working to update the look of the game, and we alternate through the maps one at a time. Last season, we updated Clash to its current Egyptian theme, and made some very conscious, artistic and stylistic changes to the environmental art. The goals on this were, make the art more exaggerated and fun, allow the background the map to be a little more consistent so guards and abilities stand out from the environment, decrease the overall contrast and noise to make the map more relaxing on the eye. Since the redo, we found the new Clash map to be much more enjoyable to play on and we set out to recreate that magic in the Season 5 Conquest map. Regarding this part, as a player I gotta say, alright, magic is a bit far-fetched when it comes to Clash, alright? I get it, I might be a bit biased here because I'm not the biggest fan of Clash as a game mode. I do think that the graphics look great but it's not magically different from, for example, Siege, I think, which doesn't work well in terms of optimization, but just looks very impressive on a machine that can handle it. That said, I do think that the overall art style on Clash is nice, and I think it's good to translate that into the Conquest map, even though it's not gonna work quite the same, especially because Conquest is not a sand map compared to Clash, and it will not be a sand map either, which makes targeting still a little bit harder because there's more structure on the map, you'll see that later. Continuing with the article, the artistic achievements we've been striving for in the rebuilding of the Season 5 Conquest map are capture the fun look, consistent tone and easy on the eye style that have been established in our new environments. Have very distinct visual themes, coloration and context for all of the jungle camps. Have vertical landmarks that make it easier to navigate to the map. Bring back fog to make the jungle more scary to be in and to also give some visual basis to support the shorter character clip out distance. I think the first two points here don't really need any further comments, they are just what they are. I do think that it's a bit strange that vertical landmarks seem to be necessary to navigate the map. I've never really heard of anyone needing those landmarks, but I guess it's a nice addition for those who felt like it was necessary. Maybe the two people out there who got lost on the conquest map without it. And the big part here is obviously bringing back the fog. We've already talked about this briefly in the last video. I think it's a really cool thing to see that back in action. And it looks really nice from the screenshot that you can see. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. And I do think that the shorter clip out distance will also make the gameplay more interesting in that regard. I imagine that might actually increase performance as well, regardless of fog being something that generally consumes a lot of resources. Continuing with the article. 
We used the concept of the Risen Underworld to give us a good context to have the two sides of the map be very visually distinct from each other. This not only makes the map more interesting, it makes the two sides of the map much clearer and more distinct from each other. The rift down the center provides a cool way for us to landmark the center of the map. It also provides some context that makes the two bases being right next to each other slightly more believable. Regarding this part I gotta say, I don't really care how believable it is. I mean, we are playing a game where you have kawaii skins for characters, you have all kinds of different gods from different pantheons, you have gods to begin with, so I mean, the believable part died when the game was created and I don't think anyone really cares about that. But that said, I do think it's an interesting concept to split the map more heavily than before in terms of design. I am not so sure if I like this split in its entirety, because the downside that we had last time was that the half of the map just doesn't look half as interesting as the other half, we're specifically talking about the solo lane here. In this case, the split will now be the lanes in itself, with one lane side actually looking a lot nicer than the other one, because one is just like a dark kind of tone, purple-ish with a bit of grey, whereas the other side is colourful and bright. From what we can tell, the sky above it is similar, with one side once again being very grey sky and the other one being the bright sky. So it makes me think that as a laner you always want to be on chaos side, so you look towards the sunny side if you're pushing up, or as a jungler you probably want to be on the other side just because it looks nicer, unless you're constantly invading. And I hope that's not the case, I hope I'm proven wrong here and it actually looks nice on both sides and not one being completely gloomy, dark and boring where the other one is all super bright and fun. The screenshots don't give away the full picture yet, so we just have to see. On the other hand, the jungle being more gloomy and dark and scary could be a really cool thing if it works out properly. I have another small concern regarding the rift in the center. As you can see there's like fractures and there's different rocks and everything all over that center area. Which could actually be annoying for the mid laners, for the mages, who often have abilities that have like circle radius that you have to aim. And it's kinda harder to tell when there's so much going on on the floor where exactly you're aiming your ability, which may actually be counterintuitive to the promised higher clarity for abilities. And because there's probably gonna be one person asking it, no, we can probably not drop through the rift. Next, the article states, we wanted very distinct areas that support the major camps, Gold Fury and Fire Giant. Looking at the screenshots here, I would say that has been successful. The Gold Fury camp looks pretty amazing. I think it's actually animated as well. It looks like the gold caves there have like gold that rains down on these glitters. And then we have a harpy nest, which also looks pretty cool, especially because it's just a normal harpy camp, I think. So if all camps are of equal quality with different buff holders that look really cool, that's gonna look really nice. The article continues as follows. We've learned a lot about what makes Titans feel good over the years and we redesigned them specifically to apply this knowledge. The Titans are now lore inspired. We made them ground based because flying Titans make it harder to judge their position and hit area. They now only have overhand attack animations making it much easier to see who the Titan is focusing with its attacks. So overall a lot more visual clarity when it comes to the Titans attacks, their positioning and they're also lore inspired so that's pretty cool. We made some other cool updates, synergizing the art and gameplay. The Phoenix Wells are now open and close, reinforcing the state the Phoenix is in. We've also greatly improved the readability of weaker reborn Phoenixes. That's it for today, what do you guys think? We're super excited to share this with you and are looking forward to hearing your feedback. And talking about feedback, here is mine. I'm glad with the visual direction Smite is going in. The map overall looks nicer, the direction that the art team took here is in my opinion a good one. I like comic styles, I think it works pretty well for Unreal Engine 3 as well, that's what we've seen with other games of that same engine as well, on that same engine as well. So it's a change for the better and it will make Smite's graphics age significantly slower, which also is very beneficial. The only question is how well the guard models will fit into that style, because some of them are not exactly comic-y. Fog is definitely good and performance increases are always good. Regardless of the risk of repeating myself here, I am still concerned about the chaos side. I really hope it doesn't end up being like just mushy, dark, boring. I really hope that there's enough like colorful looks in that side as well to make up for that. I do think that the art team has done an amazing job and I'm definitely looking forward to the new map from what we've seen so far. 
On another note, I've been uploading relatively inconsistently as of late. I'm very sorry about that. There's been a lot of IRL stuff happening, also preparation for Christmas and all that stuff. And there was also a major mess up by the audio recording software that I'm using. So something that should have been coming out days ago was still not done because I had it all recorded. And then the audio just kind of broke in various parts. Thanks very much Audition, that was fun. So that will still be coming eventually. I also want to shout out Spiff Sinister here. He's done an amazing, well, I would call it documentary for the most part, called Jeff Hindler and Barracuda, a Smite story. It will be linked down below and I highly recommend checking it out. It's a really cool piece on basically how the two have been a team through the entire career in Smite, through their entire careers and how they found their way through different teams through the team they're in today. So that's really cool to watch, really emotional as well, just a little warning ahead. Feel free to check that out. Other than that, thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click the sub button, maybe the bell, it really helps me out. See you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out.